Welcome to the Hachette ALA Midwinter Adult Buzz video. I am Melissa Nicholas of the Hachette's Library Marketing Team, and this is my 10th ALA Midwinter. One very true thing is that I love talking about, about, talking about books. Today I'm joined by my library marketing colleague, Carrie Henderson, and the elite squadron of salespeople who work with the library wholesalers, Julie Hernandez, Heidi Cantor, and Laura Shepard. In a few moments, Julie, Heidi, Laura, and Carrie will take you through noteworthy titles from late winter, spring, and early summer. Please know you can reach us via the Hachette Library website, email us at library at hbgusa.com, follow, follow us on Twitter at Hachette Live, and we look forward to hearing from you. We are also happy to visit your libraries and talk books or anything else you have in mind. Our catalogs and digital galleys are available on Edelweiss. So let's take a moment to toast Hachette's big blockbuster authors, including Ellen Hildebrand, David Baldacci, N.K. Jemison, <clears throat> Michael Connolly, Sandra Brown, Harlan Coben, Min Jin Lee, David Sedaris, and James Patterson. We look forward to many more thrilling titles from these notable names, and we anticipate more Hachette authors joining their best-selling ranks. So it's time to get to the books, and I'm turning the mic over to Julie. Hi, I'll be starting with four fiction favorites that I love this season. The first one is Who is Maud Dixon by Alexandra Andrews. This is one of the most anticipated books of 2021. It is twisty, viciously entertaining. It's a psychological, psychological thriller about how far into darkness you're willing to go to claim the life you've always wanted. This well-plotted novel where a famous novelist and a small town aspiring writer slash assistant are locked in a struggle for fortune and fame. It's a 10 addictive page turner that library staff will love. It has received three star reviews, including one from Booklist, who calls it a fresh and arresting thriller. The intrigue builds to a satisfying conclusion. Already optioned for film, Andrew's debut is a page turning, surprising read. It will be featured in a March issue of Entertainment Weekly, and Alexandra will be interviewed for PW's Writers to Watch profile. My second pick is Acts of Desperation by Megan Lowland from Little Brown, and it comes out March 9th. This is a novel of toxic relationships, a study of all-consuming desire and betrayal. In the first scene of this gut punch of a novel, an unnamed narrator meets a magnetic writer and falls under his spell. Um, and after a brief romance, he rejects her, sending her into a tailspin of jealousy, obsession, and longing. It combines the intellectual excitement of Rachel Cusk with the emotional rawness of Elena Ferrante. This interrogates the nature of desire, power, toxic relationships, and our own insatiable need to be loved. PW kicks off early buzz for Megan Nolan's act of desperation with a starred box review and says, this mesmerizes from the first page. The next two books are part of our diverse voices. And the first book is Light Seekers by Femi Kayode. This is from Mulholland, comes out March 2nd. In this literary mystery, a respected Nigerian psychologist travels to a remote southern border town to uncover the truth about the murder of three university students. This is a thrilling and amateuric mystery where an unforgettable contemporary Nigerian landscape, light seekers are wrenching novel, tackling the porousness between the first and third world. And an interesting note is the protagonist, Philip, has ran his PhD thesis on mob violence in the American South. Much of his, of his interest in the murdered students known in the book as the Okriki Three stems from his research on racist lynching in the United States. And though this novel is set in Nigeria, it will certainly resonate with American audiences and the library staff. The subject is perfect for group discussions and book clubs. My fourth fiction pick is The Thousand Crimes of Ming Su by Tom Lin, also from Holland, comes out June 1st. Um, this novel is part Cormac McCarthy, part Quentin Tarantino, and part Akira Kurosawa. This is a reimagining of a classic Western told from a Chinese American perspective and will definitely appeal to fans of the Sisters Brothers, News of the World, and Black Leopard Red Wolf. This cinematic novel is written with the otherworldly inventiveness also of Ted Chiang and is at once a thriller of romance and a story of one man's quest for redemption in the face of a distinctly American brutality. The next two books are nonfiction titles. The first one is Miseducated by B.P. Fleming, comes from her chef books, June 15th. This includes a foreword by Cornel West. Um, this is an inspiring memoir of one man's transformation through literature and the debate from a delinquent drug dealing dropout to an award winning Harvard educator, all by the age of 27. This book introduces a powerful new voice, Brandon Fleming, who shares his incredible childhood story of abuse by his father. But ultimately, this is the story of how the author developed his own self-esteem 
largely through the power of books, which is amazing. And at the age of 29, Fleming founded the Harvard Diversity Project, which is a program designed to help impoverished kids of color, teaching them to question the power structures, whether they are familial or societal. And he tells the children he meets, we must be intrusive in the places that are not inclusive. There will be a strong campaign for early reads. The author will be available to do lectures with um, literacy and educational venues. He was most recently named Forbes 30 on the 30 list, and he has Harvard to back him up. And lastly, but not least, um, I have Bird on Cage by Marlon Peterson from Public Affairs. This comes out March 25th, and this is a moving memoir from a leading advocate for prison abolition and transformative justice about coming of age in Brooklyn and surviving incarceration. This is an urgent call to end all of the cages that constrain us. Bird on Cage is a powerful debut as a man that shifts from punishment to healing and an end to mass incarceration and a new vision of justice. Marlon Peterson grew up in the 80s and 90s in Crown Heights, raised by Trinidadian immigrant parents, and he recounts his age of his story, coming of age story, challenging the typical redemption narratives and our assumptions about who deserves justice. Bird on Cage is a 21st century abolitionist memoir and a powerful debut that I highly recommend. Now over to Heidi Cantor. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm going to talk about five nonfiction titles that Little Brown is going to be publishing in the next few months. The first one is This is the Fire by Don Lemon. You're all probably familiar with Don Lemon from his nightly show on CNN. He's been a national reporter since 2003, and his book is addressing race from a unique perspective. We were fortunate enough to hear Don Lemon speak to us directly um, about why he feels he has a unique perspective on race, and it's because he has been on the ground covering all the major race events that have happened in the last 17 years. So he comes to the subject from that perspective as a reporter, and he's gonna talk about what he's seen what he's experienced and how he feels the nation can heal. Um, we just found out very exciting news today that he is going to be the keynote speaker at the Library Journal Summit on February 23rd. So you can hear more about this book directly from him on the 23rd. But uh, we're very excited and he has a lot of social media followers. He has over 2 million followers on his social media platforms combined. He also does a podcast and there's a lot of media interest. Um, since he's obviously well connected in the media world, there's a lot of people who want to talk to him about this book when it comes out, and that'll be publishing on March 16th. And there will also be an audio book read by the author and a large print version. The next book I want to talk about is How the Word is Passed. And this uh, is another book addressing race from a completely different perspective. This is uh, written by Clint Smith, and he is currently contributed contributor to the Atlantic magazine. Previously, he's contributed to the New Yorker, and he was also a co-host of the Pod Save the People podcast. Uh, Clint was born in New Orleans, moved around, um, lived in Texas, and currently lives in Maryland. He has a doctorate in education from Harvard, and he's also done two viral TED Talks about how to raise a Black son in America and the danger of silence. Uh, his last book was a poetry collection, Counting Descent, which won the 2017 Literary Award for Best Poetry Book from the Black Caucus of American Library Association. And he was also a finalist for the NAACP Image Award for that book. And he's also been a contributor to the 1619 Project that the New York Times published uh, last year. Uh, in this book, he travels to the South and visits monuments and landmarks and talks about their history and his reflection on them as a black man in the 21st century and what they mean today. Uh, recently, you might have seen in the Atlantic in September, he visited Frederick Douglass's home with his family, and he wrote about that, and that's an example of what this book will be, uh, his perspective, raising children in this country in the 21st century and how these monuments still impact us today, and that a lot of this American history is lost to most of the public and people are not aware of things that happened that they need to be aware of. Um, he'll visit places like Angola prison, slave ports in South Carolina, Monticello, um, and various other places throughout the South. This is among the most anticipated books of 2021, according to Publishers Weekly, Library Journal, and Time Magazine. And he will be profiled in Publishers Weekly this spring. And this will also have a CD, an audio version and a large print version. 
The next book I want to talk about is Noise by Daniel Kahneman. Daniel is best known for his book, Thinking Fast and Slow, which was published about 10 years ago and continues to be a perennial bestseller regarding how the brain works and how the mind makes decisions. Um, in this book, he takes another look at the brain and then here he wants to look at how noise affects the brain. So for example, you might look at the same situation in the morning and in the afternoon and make two completely different decisions just because of you're hungry in the morning and you're not hungry after lunch. And so it talks about how different states of mind will affect your decision making and how you can overcome that outside or inside noise to make better decisions. In this book, he's working with two co-authors, Oliver Siboni and Cass Sunstein, both very, both very well respected academics. He is in his 80s, um, but he's willing to tour and talk about this book and he's very much in demand as his uh, first book continues to sell incredibly well. So we're very excited about this book. And the next book I wanna talk about is The Double Life of Bob Dylan. In 2021, Bob Dylan is gonna be 80 years old. And a couple of years ago, he sold his archives to uh, a foundation in Oklahoma for over $20 million. The archives contained over 100,000 items, most of them never seen before by the public. It included handwritten notes, photos, manuscripts, films, memorabilia, and our author poured through every single item in this archive to write this about this life it's so comprehensive that it's over 700 pages and it is only the first book there's going to be a second part in 2023 so this is a lot of information about bob dylan that his fans and the public never knew the book will not be all positive it's a very uh, real look at his life and what was going on in his personal life behind the scenes as he was writing all the music that the public is aware of but now they'll learn more about the man behind the music. And the last book I want to talk about is Bamboozled by Jesus. This is Yvonne Orji. If you're a fan of Insecure on HBO, you'll know her from that show. And um, there was also very exciting news um, just announced that Disney Plus is doing a series with uh, Yvonne and co-produced by Oprah and Yvonne about her life. She has an incredibly interesting life. She was born in Nigeria, but raised in the US, but she's very tied into her homeland. And you might've caught her special on HBO, Mama, I Made It, where she intersperses visits back to Nigeria with her stand-up comedy. She's hysterically funny. And um, I couldn't get enough of the visits back home in that special, they were just, so great. She talks to her parents, she talks to people on the street, and she's just incredibly um, warm and funny and uh, an interesting woman. She also has a podcast and a lot of uh, followers on social media. She's a TED Talk with over 1 million views. And um, this book does cover her spiritual life. She is a very spiritual and religious person, but it is not a religious book. It's more of a memoir and with interspersed with humor and spirituality. So it's a little bit of everything. We're really excited that she's um, going to be with us and excited to hear more about her new show on Disney Plus. So those are the books that um, nonfiction books I'm excited about coming up in the next few months. That book is coming in um, May. And I'm going to hand it over to my colleague, Laura Shepard. Thanks, Heidi. Um, the first two books I'm going to talk about are two books from notable women of color. Uh, the first is This Close to OK by Lisa Cross Smith. Um, I hope many of you are familiar with Lisa by now. She's an author we've really been trying to build um, with her first collection of short stories, So We Can Glow, and now with this, her second novel, This Close to OK. Um, just briefly, the plot in, in the book, Two Strangers Meet Under Slightly Harrowing circumstances, Tally Clark, she's a 40-year-old divorced therapist, and she drives past a man who is preparing to throw himself off a bridge. She convinces the man, whose name is Emmett, to share a coffee with her before you know, ending things, and so begins this extraordinary weekend they spend together that will forever change their lives. 
And you'd think Emmett is the one that needs the help and counsel from, from Tally, the therapist, but it turns out there's plenty of, of pain and, and healing that, that they share and that they help each other with, plenty to go around. Um, this book, like Lisa's, all of, all of Lisa's writing really is a gorgeous tribute to sort of the power of human connection and its vital role in helping us overcome mental health issues as well as just emotional pain. It all takes place in that one weekend, so I think that's just a really beautiful and unusual construct for the novel. The book has already been featured in several highly anticipated lists for, for, for this year, for 2021. Everything from Goodreads to Glamour, uh, L. We, we keep a parade, I think we heard about just today. So this is, we just keep uh, getting more and more great, great uh, reads on this book. So I, I'm very excited about this one. Uh, the second novel is uh, from Nema Coster, What's Mine and Yours? Uh, Nema is a, a Brooklyn-born Afro-Dominican woman, and she's going to reach a whole new level with our publication of this novel. Her first book uh, was Halsey Street. It was an Amazon original, and it was a Kirkus Prize finalist, among a host of other best of lists and starred reviews that she received, received you know, far too numerous for me to list here. That book was set in Brooklyn, and it was largely about gentrification. The new book is largely about the integration of a high school. And while these topics are sort of frameworks for her to talk about very important issues, it's really Nama's unbelievably beautifully crafted characters and observations, observations of their flaws and their mistakes, their strengths and their pain that, that I think set her apart. Um, this book is set in the Piedmont section of North Carolina, and it, it jumps back and forth in time quite a bit, and it um, covers two sort of seemingly unconnected families at first, but ultimately she connects the stories into this fascinating, gripping portrait of what has been called generational pain by one reviewer, which I thought was an interesting phrase. Um, you will love these people, these characters, and she's hit on a obviously very timely and necessary topic um, of true integration in this flawed country that we live in. Um, I just can't wait to, for you to dip into it. The book has already received a starred Kirkus review, and the New York Times had, has also assigned it for a review. I'm going to switch to nonfiction now. Uh, Brat is a literary celebrity memoir from actor Andrew McCarthy. Uh, given the huge nostalgia for anything 1980s these days and the success of other books from Brat Pack authors like Demi Moore and Rob Lowe, I feel confident we're going to you know, have a lot of strong interest, interest in McCarthy's memoir. For those of you who may not remember the 80s, the Brat Pack um, was that phrase that was attached to teen actors who starred in the slew of hugely successful movies like St. Elmo's Fire, Pretty in Pink, The Breakfast Club. Um, McCarthy's memoir is chock full of reminiscences of these actors like Emilio Estevez, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, and, and all the others. But it's, it's primarily a, a thoughtful, candid look at his rapid rise to stardom as a teen in, the, in kind of the inevitable fallout of that happening in Hollywood. Um, I thought of one interesting anecdote after he filmed San Elmo's Fire with Judd Nelson and uh, Emilio Estevez, he never spoke to them again. So you get the sense that there's this brat pack and they were buddies through thick and thin, but that really wasn't quite the case. In fact, McCarthy was a bit of an outsider, but that's all detailed quite, quite eloquently. Um, in many ways, I think it's McCarthy's second act long after the brat pack faded from our imagination that is kind of inspirational. He is currently a noted travel writer for National Geographic, and he's been a director on shows such as Orange is the New Black and Law and Order, and he's gonna be a very supportive publishing partner. He has extensive so social media that we can um, you know, network with, and I think we'll see him on some late night TV as well. Um, switching gears for a minute, another event that happened in the 1980s, uh, 1989 to be exact, is, is featured in this book, Better Not Bitter by Yusef Salam. Um, 
that in 1989, the famous Central Park jogger case occurred and the subsequent arrest and incarceration of five teenage boys. Um, those boys have since become known as the exonerated five. Youssef was 15 when he was convicted and he spent seven years in prison. Since his exoneration, he has become a noted prison reform activist and a motivational speaker. Um, you may also know him as the co-author of the critically acclaimed young adult novel, Punching the Air. In Better, Not Bitter, um, I think we're publishing into the heart of this perfect storm. I think uh, Julie, my coworker, and Heidi have both mentioned books, that, A Bird Uncaged and the Don Lemon book. I mean, I think we're really building this list of books we have about racial injustice in America. We have an excellent backlist, as you, as you know. Um, he was directly impacted by a criminal by our criminal criminal justice system, and this is an inspirational toolkit and a kind of a unique take on social activism that must happen. Um, he has the vision to articulate this problem, and I think even though this is a story from the 1980s, unfortunately, it's still very relevant today as we're still grappling with these these issues as a nation. Uh, I just it's it's a it's a book of hope. And it is a book of forgiveness, which is a very important component to the dialogue that, that has to happen as we move forward. There's a very um, beautiful TED talk that's easy to access that Yusuf did. And I, I encourage you all to take a look at that if you want to just kind of dip into what he's like as a reader and a speaker. Um, finally, I'm going to talk about uh, North by Shakespeare. This is for anyone who's a fan of the Bard or maybe just somebody that likes a historical treasure hunt. Um, thousands of books and articles have been written about who, you know, asking the question, who is the true author of, of the work we attribute to William Shakespeare? This is sort of a multi-layered book. The author, journalist Michael Blanding, um, also the author of The Map Thief, which I think people will remember fondly, um, takes us on a deep dive into the research of a contemporary Shakespeare scholar named Dennis McCarthy. McCarthy's a college dropout, he's in his mid 40s, and he has a Shakespeare obsession. And over time, he becomes a self educated expert on the Bard, and he published a book of his own findings back in 2011. But McCarthy believes that Shakespeare's plays were inspired by now lost works written by a man named Thomas North. He was a Shakespearean, excuse me, an Elizabethan courtier. And the plays really are sort of a blending, if you will, of the works of North and Shakespeare, hence our title, North by Shakespeare. Much of the evidence for McCarthy's theory comes from work comparing Shakespeare's texts to documents written by North using this anti-plagiarism software that traces these uncanny similarities between their two works. And our author, uh, Michael Blanding, places, pieces together the story and kind of brings this eccentric McCarthy to, to light and his passion to get to, the bottom, to get to the bottom of the question, who is the true author of the Shakespearean canon? So that's it for me, and I'm going to turn things over to Carrie. Thank you, Laura, and thanks everyone for some really fantastic titles. I'm going to take a look at five titles. The first one, the first two are actually going to be uh, Forever. So we're going to start off with Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. Since 2019, when her debut novel, The Friend Zone, hit the shelves, Abby has been dazzling her readers with her ability to make life romantic, funny, and relatable. Then last year, we really watched her come into her own with her three-starred The Happy Ever After playlist, which I'm sure you remember. Now back on the scene with her third novel, Life's Too Short, this out this April, we can expect Abby to come through with a hat trick. In fact, Publishers Weekly has already starred this book, setting the stage for another huge success. In her new book, her main character, Vanessa, becomes an accidental social media influencer by documenting her adventurous life. Her attempts to live her life to the fullest are stunted when she finds herself in custody of her half-sister's baby. Where does the romance come in, you may ask? Well, when the hot lawyer next door proves to be a secret baby tamer, Vanessa finds herself slipping into the exact adventure she has been avoiding, a romantic adventure. Abby has been a prolific 
um, supporter of her books and she is always willing to, to promote. Um, we're really, really excited to see Life's Too Short hit the shelves and get all of the feedback from the readers that have been following her now for several books. Moving on to another forever title. This one is by Jenny Hale. If you're anything like me, then Hallmark Christmas movies hold a very special place in your heart. And you may know our next author from her two made for TV movie adaptations, Coming Home for Christmas and Christmas Wishes and Mistletoe Kisses. Now this USA Today bestselling author is here bringing us what Pop Sugar has deemed a great summer beach read. I am ready for summer and all of the beach reads that come with it. Faith is brought back to her childhood beach house when her 90-year-old grandmother plans a family reunion. But Faith hasn't been back there since her sister Casey stole her boyfriend all those years ago. And they've been estranged ever since. Now Faith is ready to work things out. But she is ready to fall in love. But is she ready to fall in love again as well? She may not have a choice after the present day owner of the beach, beach house ignites long suppressed feelings in her. Jenny Hale has been an awesome author on our list. Uh, this book is out in June, just in time for hopefully uh, a beach or at least a lawn chair set up in your living room with a heat lamp to pretend. Summer by the Sea is her new book and we're really, really excited to have her back. I'm gonna switch gears a little bit to our um, fiction and science fiction and fantasy selections. This one is a new title by Constant Sayers. And last year, she bewitched all of her audiences with her debut no novel, A Witch in Time. Her story, which was enriched by historical drama, robust characters, and a refreshing moments of humor, she delighted her readers and left them clamoring for more, as I'm one of them. In March, we will finally be satiated by her new novel, The Ladies of the Secret Circus. Sayers does not disappoint and brings us more of her historical details, family drama, and mystery. In a story that spans from jazz age Paris to modern day America, reader, readers will be enchanted at every twist and turn. We follow a character named Lara as she is transported back in time by reading her great grandmother's journals and discovering the story of a dark circus and a generational curse that may be the key to her finding her fiance who mysteriously disappeared on their wedding day. Now I don't wanna to reveal too much, so I will leave you with a quote from Lu Luann G. Smith, author of The Vine Witch. Luann said, at times decadent and macabre, The Ladies of the Secret Circus is a mesmerizing tale of love, treachery, and depraved magic percolating through four generations of Cabot women. I'm excited. That one's out in March. Lastly, I have a title that is um, getting some r really, really positive reviews. Um, this book is out in June. It's For the Wolf by Hannah Witten. The first daughter is for the throne. The second daughter is for the wolf. Red was born to fulfill one purpose, to be sacrificed to the wolf of the woods in the hope that he'll return the world's captured gods. Born just moments after her sister, Red has had her whole life to prepare for this. Everyone, including her mother, keeps their distance, knowing that one day she will be gone left to follow in a centuries old ritual. And after a life of fear plagued by dangerous powers she struggled to control, she is almost relieved that she will no longer hurt the ones that she loves. At least she knows what happens in the Wilderwood. That is until she discovers the legends are a lie. In their starred review, Publishers Weekly says, Witten debuts with a dark, dazzling reimagining of Little Red Riding Hood lovingly weaves in elements from other fairy tales, including Beauty and the Beast and Snow White, while crafting a story that is all her own. With clever, immersive prose and a subtle touch of horror, this is sure to enchant. Though For the Wolf doesn't hit shelves until June, excitement is already building for this trade paperback debut. And I have one more title, Wildwood Whispers by Willow Reese out in August. I know it's a little far off, but I'm just really excited for this one. The Wildwood is whispering, it has secrets to reveal if you're willing to listen. Every now and then we run across a novel where the setting is as much of a character as the protagonist. In those stories, the atmosphere and the landscape are constructed around us, engulfing our imagination and transporting us to new lands. Wildwood Whispers is a debut novel by Willow Reese. 
We follow her main character, Mel Smith, as she travels to Morgan's Gap, located in the shadows of the Appalachian Mountains. She is heartbroken and needs to bury her best friend after her unexpected death. Mel's final promise to her friend was to bury her in the family's wildwood garden in her small hometown. As if things weren't hard enough, Mel is feeling strange about this place, especially about the woman everybody calls Granny, who seems to have expected Mel. Here, secrets seem to call to Mel. She feels a connection to her friend's family homestead and wilderness around it, full of morning mists and deep forest shadows. This book is moody and beautiful and transports you to a place that you may not have ever been and it's exciting, but full of mystery and deceit. So with that, I wanna thank our group. We are so glad that you came to our, our booth and our page and found us here to talk about books. I would like to ask for you to take a moment and peruse all of the resources that we have, which include bios from some of our authors mentioned, like Brandon Fleming. We also have a video uh, by the author of North by Shakespeare. There's some really great resources here. So please take your time, stay with us a while, come back and visit us again. And thanks a lot for taking the time out.